The Dream is in a, bo- a lot, a lot of trouble, it seems like. The Dream is in a lot, a lot of trouble, it seems like. I don't really know if any of this story is true. I don't really know where it's coming from in particular, but it does sound pretty flipping grim. So this is courtesy of the New York Times. It says, The Dream, hitmaker for Beyonce and Rihanna, is accused of grape. The horrible dreaded word that no man wants to be accused of, they're piling on Terivius. Um, how do you say his name? Gestile Diamante or Diamant. It says here, Terius Gestile Diamant, a top songwriter and producer of Beyonce, Rihanna and other stars under the name The Dream, has been accused of rape and sexual battery in a lawsuit filed on Tuesday by a former protege. Whenever they people, whenever it's people like this who are super close to you, it lends a little bit more credence to the claims, doesn't it? It lends a little bit more, especially when you put through a lawsuit. It's like, oh, former protege went through with a lawsuit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it says here, Sh- how do you say her name? Sh- Sh- Shanaz. Yeah, I, I think it's C H A N A A Z. Shanaz Mangros who performed as Chani Monroe, says in her suit that in 2015, um, Dream used his promises to promote her career, to entangle her in an abusive relationship in which he repeatedly forced her to have sex, strangled her, and once made a video recording of an intimate encounter and threatened to show it to others. This seems to be the path of course in music, isn't it? I guess in any scene or any industry where there's very few opportunities and you know, there's always going to be the possibility of people taking advantage of other people because of the lack of opportunities and, you know, whatever it may be, people will kind of hold that over people's heads and use that as a excuse to do some foul things. It seems to be the common occurrence. So maybe as well in the music industry, if you're a woman or if you're anybody actually, and you've come out of the music industry without getting scammed, without getting abused or harassed or whatever, maybe or violated, that's a pretty much a bit of a miracle. That is something that you have to kind of be very proud of, pat yourself on the back, pour yourself a shot and really give yourself a toast because it doesn't seem like people come out of the music industry. It doesn't seem like people that get into the music industry come out of it unscathed, one way or the other. The Dream is one of the most powerful producers behind the scenes of the music industry. An eight-time Grammy Award winner who helped um, to make some of the hip-hop's biggest... Oh, no, who helped to make some of the biggest pop and R&B hits of the last two decades, including Rihanna's Umbrella, Justin Bieber's Baby, and Mariah Carey's Touch My Body. He has forged a particularly close creative bond with Beyonce, created as a writer and producer of her signature female empowerment anthems, such as Single Ladies, Put A Ring On It, and Break My Soul, working on each of the Superstar Studio albums since 2008. The way that they're describing him, it almost feels like they're describing him to people who don't know who he is because they think that he's so insignificant and so small fry that they need to overly describe him. It's like, he's almost like, you know, I'm a fan of the Dream's music and shit. And maybe his artistry as a writer and producer is way more in the forefront than his actual skill as an artist itself. Or he's not writing as an artist. So it feels like the New York Times are going out of their way to over explain and to overemphasize just how big of a deal he is so that people can understand the severity of the crimes and maybe be a bit more appalled and shocked by it because if they just mentioned his name, The Dream, most people wouldn't know who the fuck he is unless you're really balls deep in um, you know, R&B. You would have no idea who he is, especially if you're, unless you're balls deep in the music industry and you read fucking credits and whatever, maybe you won't know what he wrote, what executive produced, none of that. So it feels like they're going above and beyond to prove that, hey, He's um, a, a familiar collaborator with some of the biggest females in music nowadays. And, you know, basically, you should care about what's going on here. It continues. But Miss Mango's suit filed in the U.S. District Court of Los Angeles portrays the dream as an abusive Svengali type figure dangling the promise of fame and success before an aspiring artist while controlling her life, forcing her into unwanted sex and physically abusing her. The suit also accuses the the dream of sex trafficking, a claim that has been cited in a number of recent civil lawsuits, inclu- sorry, including um, Sean Combs, hip hop mogul known as Diddy or Puff Daddy, other accusations of harboring or transporting a victim of sexual assault by fraud or coercion. Um, the suit says um, it cites Sexual Abuse and Cover Up Accountability Act and the California law that allows people to bring sexual assault cases, even in the statute of limitations that has been um, for incidents has. Um, they allege that have expired. So 
the really sad thing about these type of cases is that from what I've seen, especially in the music industry, it seems like people let people get away with things for a long time before they, you know, make it known that they weren't happy with what was going on. They let it, they let people get away with it. So now you understand why this sort of behavior is never going to get, you know, it's never going to, it's, it's not something that you can ever get rid of in the music industry or any industry, especially ones with le least opportunity because there are people out there that do, do what the dream may be promised while still abusing. So those people um, are the ones that unfortunately um, are out here continuing this perpetual trend of abuse and manipulation, harassment and shit because there are people out there desperate enough to get their career up and going that they will be willing to put up with certain things and there are people who are sick enough to go through with that thing in order to get what they want as well. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a mess to be fair. What the dream did to me made made me made it impossible to live the life that i was envisioned for myself says the person the victim um ultimately my silence has become too painful and i realize i need to tell my story to heal i hope that doing so will help others and prevent future horrific abuse i wonder if this person actually got the courage to say what they said because of cassie that's another effect that people don't realize i've just realized just now and not only is cassie going to open the floodgates for other people to be brave enough to you know speak up against diddy and the stuff that he's may have may have not done to them in the past but cassie coming forward and doing what she did is also going to give other people courage who have nothing to do with her the courage to kind of step up and talk about their painful experiences so it's a net positive it continues in a statement supplied by the representative um the dream denied accusations the dreams quote says the quote these claims are untrue and defamatory i oppose all form of harassment and i've always strived to help people realize their career goals as somebody committed to making a positive impact on my fellow artists and the world at large i'm deeply offended and saddened by the accusations um the, the, but he's not going to counter or anything is he hmm interesting um miss mangrove 33 was born in netherlands and wanted to break into music uh, music business as a pop singer and a songwriter according to her complaint she was working in the united states in late 2014 when an associate um of the dream asked her to send examples of her music in january 2014 she 15 sorry she flew to atlanta to meet the dream who then took her to a strip club began recording her and according to the complaint told her that he would make her the next beyonce and rihanna <laughs> You have to also really. You have, there's also has to be a little, a little bit of like, you know, accountability too, man. For you to actually believe that some random dude in Atlanta is gonna turn you into Beyonce and Rihanna when you don't, you're not Beyonce and Rihanna to begin with, is absolutely insane. It continues within days, according to the lawsuit. Um, the dream began to pressure her into sex, telling her it was part of the process at the house of a studio where they were working the suit says he locked her in the dark room and would only stop aggressively and would only stop aggressively having sex with her once she said that she loved him oh the dream jesus christos couple more articles couple more paragraphs here more sexual encounters continue the suit says with mr with the dream sometimes holding her down and refusing to use a condom despite her protest at the time the suit says he made business proposals for her Suggesting that he could make her be the opening act for Beyonce's next tour. Yo. Beyonce was... Yo. What? According to the complaint, um, the dream has been more controlling than and violent. Has become more controlling and violent. He placed her in an Atlanta hotel and his security staff monitored her movements and berated her unless she regularly checked in with him. After the complaint... Um, complained about the bed bugs in her hotel room her court says mr the dream exploded in anger telling her that she was disloyal brat and blaming the attention she spent on her dailies for the next album beyonce what and blaming the attention he spent on her for the days of the next beyonce album he piled her with alcohol and marijuana and complaints and once forced mr mrs mango to have sex with him while he recorded and later threatened to show the footage of other people during the sex, the complaint says Mr. The Dream placed a gun next to her, um, and saw which which he saw as a warning. At the movie theater one day, the Dream asked the woman, the complaint, to perform oral sex on him. The complaint says after she said no, he angry he became angrily forced her to have sex in view of other theater patrons. It was physically painful encounter. They said, Jesus Christ. 
Miss Moro took uh, his van and again forced her to have sex, pinning her down and placing. But how do you continue having seen this kind of person who does this to you? How? Jesus, man. Jesus. But yeah, as you can see, it's looking kind of peaky for the dream. It's looking kind of peaky. These accounts are pretty disturbing. And just another evidence that these R&B niggas are, all these hip-hop niggas are super, super freaky, isn't it? Like, freaky, like, bath in your mouth type of freaky. It's pretty sad, to be fair. They can't just, like, you know, stay at home and just chill and produce great music and go that way. It has to be more, you know? It has to be more. Always has to be just a little bit more. I don't understand it, personally. I don't understand it in the slightest. I really, 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 really don't.